to see To do is strength and wisdom All that needs to be done And become the hope that I can be Set me free from my fears and hesitations Grant me courage and humility Give me the spirit To face the challenge And start the change I long to see Today I start the change I want to see Even if I'm not the light I can be the spark in faith Service and communion Let us start the change we want to see The change that begins in me Today I start The change I want to see Even if I'm not the light I can be the spark in faith Service and communion Let us start the change we want to see Change that begins in me Live Jesus in our hearts Pleasant afternoon to everyone. I am Magda De Leon, Associate Dean of Benilde's Arts and Culture Cluster. Benilde's Arts and Culture Cluster, or BACC, operates under the School of Design and Arts of De La Salle College of St. Benilde. BACC is one with its programs, namely Arts Management, Dance, Design Foundation, Music Production, production design, and theater arts, and striving to be a leader in creative education by instigating progressive, inclusive, and ethical artistic process. Our warmest welcome to everyone as we engage in one of the many iterations of Benilde Back Talks 2021, a series of conversations on creative interventions, engagement, impact, and artistic process. We've kicked off Benil Back Talks 2021 with tall tales of traveling scholars with Dr. Sunita S. Muki. Today, we are delighted for this opportune moment to have an in-depth dialogue with Benil Brother President Edmundo Fernandez, FSC. 
through portrait of brother president as artist, brother Dodo will narrate his own artistic works, creative process, and contemplations on art and its crucial role in transformative education and society. This will be facilitated by Benil's Arts and Culture Cluster's very own Dr. Sunita S. Muki, a thespian, writer, artist, arts advocate, and a scholar. Should you have questions about the talk, please course them through the chat box. Doc Suni will accommodate them during the open discussion. Good afternoon, Doc Suni. Hello, hello, Magda. Hello, everybody. You who have come from far-flung places, uh, all the way from, there are some people from the United States, there are people from Malaysia, there are people from Bacolo, there are people from all the way from Taft Avenue. Oh my God. Uh, so glad to see all of you and um, um, to know that you are here together with us to understand what it means to be an artist from the viewpoint, from the vantage of someone who is a brother and also a brother president. Today we shall be intrigued and inspired by our own brother president, who is also an artist, or is he an artist who is also a brother president? Today we will find out who Edmondo Fernandez FSC really is. So is brother president is also an artist or is the artist also a brother president? We have here Edmundo Fernandez FSC or brother Dodo, as we fondly call him, who is the president of De La Salle College of St. Bedeod, who is also the president of La Salle Green Hills, president of DLSP NYEL, Director of the Academy of St. John, which is in Cavite. Director of St. Francis Academy, which is also in Cavite. Besides all these educational leadership positions, he is also an artist. Brother Dodo as artist, he has done one-man shows, collages, suspended residencies in Vermont, in Japan, in France. I was very intrigued about this aspect of our brother president, uh, being myself as Magda outed me, a thespian. I wanted to know how our leader of uh, our different La Salle schools and especially Benilde, coming from the School of Design and Arts also, how does this man think? I was curious to see his work and I was curious to have a conversation with him and to share it with all of you. So, why don't we call upon Brother Dodo? Let us see you, Brother Dodo. Where are you? I'm here. Morning. Good afternoon. Hello, Brother Dodo. How are you doing today? I'm good. Um, I was a little nervous with your introduction. <laughs> <laughs> what? Because... <laughs> I'm sure you shouldn't be, Brother Dodo. <laughs> but this is the truth. This is who you are too, right? Uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, you guess. Brother Dodo, why don't we get into it right away and talk about you as an artist? Sure. How, how about that? We have about uh, 160 people who are ready to hear you, uh, to hear you speak about your art and to engage with you about this, a different aspect of who you are. The, from the very beginning, the genesis. When did you realize art and your role in it for it? What does it mean to think, feel, be an artist? Who and what inspires you? You can answer these questions however you like. Thank you, Sunita. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to say hello to everybody. I, I saw a number of brothers uh, in the audience as well, so hello. Well, when I was a kid, I liked to draw and I liked to create and I liked to paint. And I, I always enjoyed doing creative things. The other option I had for college was actually architecture. And even until now, actually, if you look at my, my desk, it has uh, books on architecture. Um, I'm a bit of a frustrated architect. I, I, I did realize that it was something that was life-giving to me and that I enjoyed doing. 
I don't know if many of you know, but when I entered uh, UP, uh, I took the talent test in fine arts. I passed UST College of Architecture, but I passed UP College of Fine Arts. And I told my mom that I was going to, I liked UP. When I went to UP, I liked the environment. Uh, I liked, you know, there was a lot of trees and as opposed to USC, it was, you know, it was in the middle of uh, the traffic, it was, you know, the buildings and all that. I said, that I think I'd like to go to UP. So I promised my mom I was going to shift to architecture uh, about a year into fine arts. At that time, it was really the back door to architecture. But I ended up enjoying fine arts so much. I enjoyed the freedom of it. Uh, coming from a Catholic uh, education, Catholic elementary and high school education, I found UP intoxicating. I found it liberating. And, uh, and yeah, the rest is history. I stayed. Uh, in fact, my mother remembered about three years or four years after, I, I thought you were going to shift to architecture. And she was, she didn't talk to me for a month. But uh, so uh, that's how I ended up in, in fine arts. I, uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed it very much. And then I joined the brothers. Um, and in fact, Sunita, I stopped painting for about 20 years until I went to Vermont. Oh, uh, oh wow. Yes, I, I, uh, when I joined the brothers, I sort of stopped totally. Uh, and then when I had an opportunity for a sabbatical, I decided to go on an artist residency instead of a Lasallian sabbatical, Lasallian seminar workshop. And I thought that was the best thing, uh, the best decision I've ever made. It brought me back. It was, it was after 20 years, I began painting again. Uh, my very first night in Vermont was the very first time in 20 years I held a pen and paper. And I said, oh, my God, what, what was I thinking? I traveled all the way to Vermont. To, and you know, my first few drawings weren't working. My first few attempts of art weren't working. And I said, oh, my God, I'm going to be stuck here for three months, you know. I eventually ended up doing the trouser series. I don't know if you're going to show it later, but uh, I ended up doing the trouser. I, uh, that was like a, uh, um, I came full circle. So after 20 years, then I stopped and went back. I, I, I felt, I felt whole after that, whole, after that experience in Vermont, when I returned to, to painting. Okay, um, I, I, I'm fascinated by the 20 year gap uh, and uh, uh, you're like Jesus who disappeared for a long time and then appeared at 33 years old or whatever age to discover art again and Jesus discovered his mission. Um, forgive me for making those, uh, those <laughs> religious references. <laughs> okay. it's like your hidden years from art, uh, you were doing something else, you were discovering. Oh, I was busy with uh, being a brother. I was busy uh, at being, uh, teaching in school, uh, doing administrative work. Um, but but I realized now uh, when I returned back to, to doing art, it was something that was natural to me. So after a couple of days, it was it was like it was like I, I didn't skip twenty years. It was so it was it was there. I, I was glad it was still there. Um, so uh, yeah, it was it was good for me. It was very healing for me, in fact, mm -hmm. to have done that. To have gone. And in a way, Sunita, when I joined the brothers, I kind of cut off from that part of my life. So in fact, my whole twenty years, including returning to Vermont, was also reconnecting with old friends from college. It took a while because when I joined the brothers, I kind of cut off from from that part of it. Mm -hmm. So. So it was really coming full circle. Uh, it was very healing, very, it made me wholeer. I don't know if that's the right way to say it. It made me whole. That's, uh, that's interesting. I guess God had intentions for you to do other work before he gave you, gave you back the gift, right? Yeah, the opportunity right. To, to draw again. Um, uh, I'm curious to know in your childhood, what or whatever, when did you think that this is an artistic moment or I want to draw this or when did you feel to use a very atavistic way of thinking? When did the muse visit you? You know, I'm not sure. 
Um, it, it was just uh, I during class, during class with my teachers would lecture. I doodle on the side. Hmm. It, was, and it was really nothing. It was just doodling, and and I, I liked doing that. And I, looking back now, uh, even in my current work, it's all about doodling. It's it's really drawing. It's really um, the act, the act of. And even in elementary and in high school, when I get bored, uh, I, I just zone out and I just start doodling. Um, so I, I I don't think there was ever a a moment when I realized, okay, I want to draw. I want to be an artist. This is what I want to be. I kind of just ended up in fine arts. I thought it was, you know, I thought UP was at such a nice school, and uh, yeah, yeah, and I thought that. Among, I, I come from a family of nine. I'm the seven, and uh, my my older siblings are accountants and engineers. And in a sense, when you are in a big family, you want to be different. You you know you want to be. So I thought, yeah, being being in fine arts was uh, was the way for me to go. It was something I liked doing and I enjoyed doing. It was interesting because some of my friends uh, would ask, so how did you earn a living? So what's your program? Oh, I mean fine arts in UP. So how would you earn a living? It's it's alien to some of them that somebody will take up painting, and you know. So yeah, don't know if I'm making sense. Yes, absolutely, you're making sense. I mean, it's just something we that it's a it's a grace actually. It's a grace that falls on our lap, uh, and uh, you know, from a you became you you doodled and then you got fine arts. Uh, <laughs> You were yes. supposed to be an architect, but it was fine arts, and then you became a brother. That's and then, right. come, and then it came back to you. Okay. So let's let's take a look at uh, one of your pieces. Okay. So here we are, uh, brother Dodo. I um, I have chosen pieces uh, uh, from your collection. Um, of course, they are not totally old, always representative of uh, of your complete uh, your complete uh, uh, over, right? However, um, forgive me for the limited uh, display today, but maybe people will be more curious and ask you personally if they want to see more. But I was intrigued by what I believe to be Mother Mary. Uh, yes. Am I correct? Yes. Yes, yes, um, yes. Uh, Can you tell me a little bit, can you tell us all a little bit about uh, why this interpretation, the color, this mood, Tell us a little bit about it. This is uh, uh, um, when I was in towards the end of my college life. Part of the work I was doing was getting a figure from large Renaissance paintings and isolating them and blowing them up. That was part of our. I think it was an assignment under Roberto Chopin one time. They kind of and. So I did a series of paintings. This is supposed to be the grieving Mother Mary, Mater Dolorosa. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it was meant to look like an icon. Uh, in fact, I don't know if you notice, but on the top left and on the top right are, they're like um, Russian alphabet, the Russian writing. Oh, oh. That I had erased, that oh. I had erased and painted over. Uh, but I kind of like the, the fact that it, it's, a, it, it's a peeps. It comes out if you look at it clearly. I, I had a gold leaf, but at that time I bought gold leaf, but I didn't know how to put it. So I just ended up painting it in gold background. Uh, this was for, actually this is for Brother Amin. He gave me that image and said, can you paint this for me? And so I painted it for him. And that, that uh, picture is in his house, actually. Okay, okay, okay. So it's really an image of uh, uh, yeah, our grieving mother. Well, she's, uh, I, what I like about it, of course, is the brilliance of the blue. It's That's a beautiful right. blue. That's right. And her complexion. That's right. She's, a, more, she's yeah. a morena. Um, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. It, it's and, all... A part of a large painting of Jesus Christ, uh, Mother Mary, and a few other figures. So I just took that part and then I just blew it up. 
Yes, it's, uh, it's quite beautiful. And I like you sitting right in front of her. And then we see a little reflection here and it looks like an apparition right there. <laughs> it might be her, who knows, right? This is, this is when, I, when I saw this picture, I was intrigued by that. I said, okay, this looks like an apparition is, uh, is with you here too. Maybe in, fact, the... in fact, Sunita, I painted this when I was a brother already. Okay. Uh, there's another painting of the Immaculate Conception that I had painted as a brother. These were the last two paintings I did. And in fact, when I went to Vermont 20 years after, my initial plan was to paint religious imagery. Mm. I ended up not doing religious imagery. Yeah. Yes, as we will see later on, uh, that yes, they are not, uh, they're, uh, <laughs> they're a little bit weird and wonderful actually, <laughs> but, um, uh, I see a little influence of El Greco here, actually, uh, the elongated features, um, uh, the elongated uh, uh, body also of... Uh, uh, it's interesting uh, because I did like El Greco when I was a student. His uh, real name is Dominicus Theotokopoulos. And uh, um, yeah, he was living in Spain, but he was Greek. That's why he was called El Greco. Uh, his famous painting of uh, the, the city of Toledo. Yes. Uh, but, but yes, he did. I, I like that. Uh, in his time, uh, his paintings look already highly stylized. Uh, they were, I, in fact, I do have some drawings in, uh, as a student of some of El Greco's paintings. Okay. Um... Okay. The, the, uh, you want to say anything more? Yes. I mean, yeah. this, the one on the right is from Bernini's sculpture. This uh, one? Yeah, the one on the right. Oh, uh, Saint Therese? Ecstasy, the Ecstasy of Saint Therese. Yes, yes, absolutely. And uh, the one on the left, I think was taken when I was do. I, I did that when I, uh, I did a 30 day retreat. And there was a big, uh, a big uh, relief of the Last Supper. And it, in, uh, uh, it intrigued me because he was the only one not looking, not facing J Jesus. All the others were facing Jesus, but he's, he was facing up, away from the table. And if you notice, he's holding the loot bag. He's holding the money. Ah, yes, yes, that, yes. That, uh, yeah. Uh, but basically, at that time, because I was a young brother, I, uh, I was, well, I suppose, into religious imagery. Was also I like I always like how Renaissance painters um, composed uh, figures in a, in a very dramatic way. Uh, Renaissance, Rococo. Uh, so they're always OA. If, if yes. you use language today, <laughs> they're always OA. So so yeah, I, I like that. I like uh, the way they, they that always uh, kind of intrigued me. Well, which is, I guess, the reason why I also chose it, because I thought that this had a lot of emotion, in fact. Um, of course, the ex ecstasy of St. Therese because of her avid devotion. And then this very um, moody picture, actually, of Judas. I mean, we know what he's about to do, right? Yes. Um, so there's some trepidation there, and he's uh, actually quite faceless. He's faceless. Yes. yes. I always like that. I always like painting... Well, drawing and painting uh, figures without faces, basically meaning it could be anybody, it could be me, it could be you, it could be the yes. person who have it. Yes, so I've entitled actually these three pieces as the devotionals because I guess of the subject matter. And you're telling me that they're, um, they're, 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 they are creations that you made while you were a brother. Yes, yes. yes. And just before the big gap. Yes, exactly. Yes. The, the disappearing year, years, <laughs> as we will call it. Um, the, the medium that you used here um, was uh, pencil? No, these are all uh, ink. It's ink, pen and ink. ink. Uh, they're usually drawn very fast uh, and very quick. Uh, that's why um, if you could see the strokes are, they're drawn all over the place. And uh, yeah, I, I've always enjoyed using pen and ink. Yeah, that's, and uh, in my la later works, 
they're all pen and ink. Yes, and then there, are, I mean, there's there's tension in there. I mean, you can be squiggly, you can be uh, right. smooth, you can uh, uh, press it really hard, lightly. So it's quite, uh, uh, it can be quite a tool of expression, actually. Those that's things. right. That's right. Okay, yeah. this one, this one is very disturbing, brother Dodo. What is going on in your mind here? Okay, this one I did in Japan, uh, um, September, no, sorry, August of uh, 2019. They're large drawers, they're very large. They're like uh, four feet by five feet. Uh, and it took me about a week and a half to do, I, there are three, I don't even know the others, but there are three of them. Uh, they, I, this comes from a context of my own abhorrence of uh, needless death, needless violence, and in my own fascination with my own mortality. And uh, so I was in Japan for six weeks and all I did were three drawings, three large drawings. They were, um, they were very heavy to do. It, um, it wasn't, no, not that it wasn't easy, but it, was, it wasn't a light thing to do. Mm. And uh, part of it to me that is, um, prior to this, I, uh, I went to the Camino, and uh, in my in my in the places I'd stay, I'd watch YouTube. But what I would watch would be World War II, World War One uh, documentaries, and uh, documentaries on the Holocaust, uh, and even not the 9/11, the 9/11 uh, documentaries. You know, it's one day you're fighting for your country, the next day you're dead. You know? and and. Um, but so it was, it was all about that fascination with life and death. Uh, but at the same time, it was a, a, an abhorrence against needless violence. Uh, and I was watching, especially the Holocaust. I, for a while, I was into the Holocaust and why it happened. And, and it's, just, it's just amazing how uh, you know, a, a group of people's desire uh, to, to conquer the world can lead to an eradication of a race or, or a perceived eradication. It, so it's that, that's and, and the pictures, the, the, the images I used were Holocaust images. So, so like for example, this one is an image of this is a woman who was um, uh, was starved. And she was all skin and bones, and she was and she was just thrown among a pile of corpses. Uh, and there's a contraption in her hand. I think it was used to tie her. Um, so yeah. Yes, I can. I can see. I can see this. Um, this. Uh, it looks like a, like a screw, actually. Right. Right. Yeah. I actually don't know what it was. So it, because some of the images I used were fuzzy black and white images mm -hmm. that I had to uh, put together. So, but I would imagine it was a contraption that tied, you know, that tied them together. Well, that tied the hands. Yes, so, and, then, and then you were able to capture her rib cage. Yes, the yes. Initiation, uh, the yes. knobbly knees, the starvation. Um, yes. And, uh, and you know what I like about drawing, and especially drawing large pieces, is that it's meditative. It, it's just, you just, you just, um, you know, uh, go on drawing and you're just, it's like praying. It's a bit like praying and a bit like meditating. Uh, the only difficulty with large scale drawings is I always need to step back or because after a while I kind of lose perspective. Uh, you know, am I doing the right shade? Am I, so it's, um, yeah, it's a very interesting process. Yes, I can see. Uh... I can see that uh, one can be meditative with this, but it permits you to go to dark places. Yes, yes. And how do you come out of that, Brother Dodo? Um, I don't allow it. I, well, I don't allow it to overwhelm, overwhelm me. It's, uh, I can go there, I can, meditate and reflect on it, uh, but I don't allow it to, to 
to overwhelm me. Mm. In, in fact, uh, right after my Japan residency, I spent just a week away and then went to France. And I knew I didn't want to do something like this. That's why my drawings, you will see later, from in, in France are very, very different from the drawings I did in Japan. Yes. But I did, I liked them, I enjoyed them. Uh, uh, there was one other large drawing I did that I tore. Uh, that was a group of several dead people piled up one on top of the other. I wasn't able to finish it. <laughs> and in the end, I realized, you know, I, I don't want to bring this back home. So I kind of tore it. So. Yeah, but there's also a purgation that can happen when you draw it. Yes. A kind yes. of catharsis that can happen. It's out there. It's out from you. Yes. And I actually love the ritual that you did of tearing it up because it's like you're tearing it up. You're forgetting it. You're uh, erasing it. Um, yeah. Without, yeah. without negate, without deny. It's not a denial. It's like, oh. I don't want this. You know, you know Sunita, in, at the end of the Japanese residency was an art festival uh, of the re well of the region. It's called the Kana Art Festival, and so it, uh, those who exhibited were those who were in the residency plus other Japanese artists. And, and anyway, the one that was featured in the papers were the three drawings of, of dead people that I had. You know, it, it was featured in the Japanese newspaper. I didn't get a copy of it, but you know, I was happy. Well, I guess it's dramatic, I suppose. So, yeah. But it's also very close to uh, the idea of the Holocaust that happened with Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Yes, actually. Yes. In fact, so I had to give a talk and I was explaining, you know, and, uh, and one of the audiences, a Japanese who spoke English, he said, uh, why did you, was there any experience with, uh, with World War II? And of course, she probably was alluding to you know, uh, Japan invading the Philippines. Was your mother? Was your family? I said no. It was really just my own fascination in my own. You know. Yes, because even that that incident in history is also uh, blood curdling. That's um, right. The, uh, the 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 devastation of uh, the nuclear uh, holocaust of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But, but you know, also, Sunita, it was my own uh, way of uh, protesting the, the extrajudicial killings in a, in a very different way, you know. Mm. It's not a direct message against it, but it was about that as well. Yes. Um, well, we, uh, there's still time to do other work. <laughs> Long life. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to put them in the chat group or remember them because we will have an opportunity to talk about these later. Okay? Okay, this is another one, Brother Dodo. But before I have you speak, I have a little surprise for you. Okay. A, a theater student, a theater major, is going to read the poem. Her name is Isabel Peterson. Okay. Uh, she's coming all the way from Calgary, Canada. Oh, wow. Hello. Hello, Isabella. Hello. <laughs> um, and it's very cold and very, very early in the morning, an ungodly hour. <laughs> <laughs> but she's very happy, very happy to... Uh, read this poem in companion with your uh, image of a fly. Isabella? The Fly by William Blake. Little fly, thy summer's play my thoughtless hand has brushed away. Am I not a fly like thee, or art thou not a man like me? For I dance and drink and sing till some blind hand shall bl uh, brush my wing. If thought is life and strength and breath, and the want of thought is death, then am I a happy fly, if I live or if I die. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, she's also going to read uh, another response to the fly. 
As Gregor Samsa awoke one morning from uneasy dreams, he found himself transformed in his bed into a monstrous vermin. And this is from Franz Kafka's Metamorphosis, one of the most famous lines in literature, actually, uh, which is what was uh, in my mind. Isabella, thank you so much. Um, thank you, Isabella. Uh, Isabella, what I want to ask you, when you were looking at the picture as well as the um, poem, can you tell us what were you experiencing or feeling inside you? Uh, yes, Doc Sini. So I think what's interesting is that these two pieces of literature have different impacts on the way that we view the art. Um, for me, especially when reading William Blake's poem about the fly, I get the reminder and the sensation that um, God's creatures are all within his creation. And I think sometimes uh, for us as people, we can get a little bit caught up in our own greatness or our own bigness of ourselves. And we forget that actually we come from dust and we'll return to dust, which maybe is apt as well because it's Lent right now. Um, and just the reminder, of, yeah, the reminder of our existence and that, you know, in the end, we're all... We're all creatures and maybe we are more significant or less significant than the fly, but we come and end up in the same place. Um, so there's something very existential about it. Uh, and then I think with Franz Kafka, it's a different kind of existentialism and it's a different kind of mood um, that's then evoked from the art. And I think as well, especially on the, on the top photo, when we see the metamorphosis and the uh, evolution of the drawing, um, it's very, it's poignant. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Isabella. Thank you, Isabella. Uh, <laughs> you, you look bright-eyed and bushy-tailed despite the cold and the early morning. Uh, I had a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, uh, I'm very happy that you were able to join us and I'm sure Brother Dodo is too, right, Brother Dodo? Thank you very much. <laughs> of course, thank you as well. It's an honor to be here and thank you for letting us see your art, Brother Dodo. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Brother Dodo, um, we've told you what we see. And even in our conversations before even this talk, I was intrigued by this fly. That's why I wanted to include it. Uh, it made me think of Kafka. Uh, yeah. Then, yes, please. You know, uh, in the final exhibition for, before we left, uh, and it, wasn't an, it was an open studio. And where was, where was this, Brother Dodo? Where was this? In France. In France. In, in, uh, right. So we kind of just fixed, cleaned up the place and uh, we announced, you know, it was in a very small town and we had open studios and we did get a lot of uh, people who came in. I had a poem of William Blake beside. So I, I was wondering whether you saw that photo because I have a photo of that, uh, the fly, I think it's this one, the one, the bigger one. With, with that, no. so I, if you, if you didn't see that and you just decided to uh, take that poem by William Blake, then it's a marvelous coincidence uh, that, that that you have that. Anyway, uh, so after Japan, after doing Dead People, I uh, didn't know what to do when. This, I, and this is an improvement from Dead People. <laughs> this I began, on Dead People. <laughs> I began with Dead Flies. I began with a lot of dead flies. And uh, it was partly because my mentor in France, who was the, the artistic director, the lovely guy, 70 year old Englishman who was living in, in France, was challenging me to free up my, my, my style. He said, you're very controlled. It's very, very controlled, he says. Um, if you see the, especially the Nautilus, I'm not sure if you're gonna show the Nautilus, uh, and the other drawings that I've had, he says, you're very, very controlled with your strokes. Uh, and he says, learn to learn to free up. So, you know, it was, um, it was a very nice challenge. Uh, I will take the problems of painting anytime over the problems of, of running a school. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but actually the one on top, the four flies, they are mixed media. So there's mm. charcoal. There's graphite, there's pastel, uh, and sometimes they're overlaid images. Mm. Uh, some of them are image transfers. So I, I draw them in one piece of paper, I transfer them, and then I paint over them or draw over them. Uh, 
the other, and I also use graphite. Uh, I also use graphite dust uh, powder. Um, so it's it's really it had no it had no meaning to me other than it was a figure that I was that was very um, interesting, uh, and I just went, kept on drawing. I just kept on drawing different flies. So. <laughs> and uh, it was, and, and, you know, my mentor would come in and said, oh, you try this, or you try doing this. So I ended up doing a lot of flies. And in fact, there's one drawing, I don't know if you, you have, if you show it, of dead flies, of dead flies, but the, 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 they're, they're, they're looser, the strokes are much more loose. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that's what he liked, that's what he put in the poster. Uh, and so he says, yeah, this is the way to go. So he wanted me to loosen up my, my technique uh, as opposed to the very controlled. Uh, so it was nice, you know, I would go and have conversations on why it's controlled. On, on, so we'd go back to my life. It was a very interesting residency because we talk about my life. And, oh, okay, so that's the reason why there, there was a bit of uh, therapy <laughs> in, involved. Yeah. So... So yeah, so it was it was so it basically really is just a technique. Uh, I, I just like the imagery of the flies. I you can imagine how many how many images I went through in trying to look for dead flies and you know. And in fact, I had to study the anatomy of the fly so that I, <laughs> so I could get it properly. So I did I did study. Uh, I looked at it carefully. Uh well, you know, maybe I am romantic, and I would say to loosen you up, maybe you should do some dragonflies and butterflies. <laughs> I can do that too. Yes, yes. Um, and and you know, it makes me wonder um, what those therapy sessions were like because you chose a fly <laughs> to examine deeply. Um, I mean, the resilient creatures—they'll be with us forever, but they are vectors of uh, a lot of bad diseases. Uh, and, and you know, at this time in France, this was summer moving into fall. So there were huge flies. I, you can't even, they were big. And they, they're not afraid of people. So I'd come near them. <laughs> I'd come near them and they wouldn't fly away. <laughs> okay. So, so I was all part of that, you know, and they come into my studio, not many, but you know, two or three and they hover around uh, my studio while I'm doing drawings of flies. So it was very interesting. And they land on the table and I look at them up close, like, like this, and they wouldn't fly away. Amazing, but they were huge. I didn't realize France had huge flies. I think they knew that you were painting and you were drawing them. <laughs> there was some vanity involved, I think. And maybe they were helping you helping you rediscover art too, you know? You know, miracles yeah. come in unusual ways, right? They are there, they were sentinels. Um, uh, saying, okay, you want to paint, you want to draw us, you want to study us, sige, I'll, we'll stay here. <laughs> interesting, that's very interesting. Well, I must confess that when you did send me your portfolio, uh, the poem, The Fly, was part of it. Okay, 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 <laughs> all right, okay. And it made me understand why you would choose uh, uh, this subject matter because of its ephemerality, um, uh, especially. And but my first response was af actually Kafka's Metamorphosis um, of being transformed into something like this, uh, and then the story goes on in its uh, existential absurdist way. Um, uh, so we, there was there was some meeting there, and uh, I'm very happy that Isabel was, uh, uh, she's a graduate, she's graduating this term actually from theater arts and she's been doing this online um, because okay. of uh, this uh, lockdown uh, in Calgary, Canada. Brr. <laughs> so uh, I'm very happy that she was able to join us. Okay, the Nautilus, <laughs> the controlled brother Dodo. <laughs> Um, you could see it's very different from the fly. It's very, oh my very... God! Yes, yes. Uh, uh, it's 
Tell us, tell us a little bit more. This about one it. took two weeks. This one took two weeks to make. It's like each day would be several um, chambers. I, I could only do two or three chambers a day. Um, and I, I liked it because it's doing something like this is uh, like my comfort zone. It's easy for me. It's um, that's why doing the flies and the dead flies and loosening up my technique was very challenging for me because I, it wasn't me. Uh, but this one, this one I love doing. It's meditative. Uh, you, you know, one of the big issues there, if you look at the picture on the left where I'm sitting, is I left a big part of it empty, uh, the, the top part. And my mentor was saying, actually, I wanted to, to complete it. But my mentor was saying, no, no, don't complete it. I think it's perfect uh, with, the, with the line. And uh, so I, it, it, was a, it was a bit of a challenge for me to walk away from it and, and say it's complete. Looking at it now, it does look complete to me. Yes. Uh, but he wanted me to merge the flies with the Nautilus. He says, you want to put a fly in it? And I said, I'm not, I said, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. No, I, it, I said, no, I'm, I'm not sure. I'll just draw a separate piece of, a piece of paper. So, uh, yeah, this was my residency in France was four weeks. Half of it was on, on the Nautilus. Uh, it was a nice, I wake up at six in the morning. It was still dark. Uh, it get it would be bright by about 7:38, and so I spend you know the early part of the morning just drawing, uh, listening to music, and yeah, that that's what I like about the residency. It's you, you live like an artist, um, and uh, yeah, I get a I, I get a croissant at about at about eight. The boulangerie down in, in the uh, plaza would open, so I go down, I get a croissant. And a coffee, and I bring it up to my studio, and that would be my breakfast. And then I draw again, and by about nine or ten, I'd start walking, and then yeah. That sounds it was a nice, that it's a sounds, nice sounds really lovely. That the oh experience. my god! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I I drop and I drop everything not to go in an artist dressing. Don't do that to us. <laughs> Um, uh, you know, when I saw this, uh, actually, when I saw the Nautilus and I saw you sitting in front of it the way you are sitting, I thought it was a self-portrait. <laughs> uh, um, but not maybe in the restrictive sense uh, that, um, that your mentor was saying, the controlled, um, but more like that there was... There were things going on inside you in these chambers that needed to be unfolded. <laughs> and you were looking, and look at the way you're looking at us. It's like, I'm inviting you. It's <laughs> going to be a little dangerous. Um, maybe I'll show you, maybe I won't. But that's what I was seeing. That's why I included you there. <laughs> I included that self what I call the self-portrait. Uh, and as you're describing what you're saying about the controlledness of the Nautilus and your mentor saying, be free with a fly. <laughs> um, I think uh, uh, I, I, I actually am liking this Nautilus even more um, because I see that there are inner chambers. Um, yes. Sometimes a little bit dark because there's holocaustic things happening there. There's the grieving Mother Mary. There's um, the fly. <laughs> um, but then there's also uh, Dodo, who's inviting, who agreed to this talk <laughs> to tell us about his inner workings, right? Yeah. About himself. Yeah. You know, uh, you cannot imagine how many shades of light and shadow are in this freaking Nautilus. Mm. <laughs> it was just, you know, I had to, um, every day I'd look at it. So after a while, I'd have to stop because I'd, I'd lose perspective. But 
you know, so some chambers are like for example the ones below near me are really dark but as yes. you know the light shines on it differently mm. and, and, and how do you capture that how do you ca so it's um it's very it's it was a nice problem but it was a big problem nonetheless for me it was like oh my god am i doing this right um uh, i i think that's the, the control the controlled self and the, the self that needs to be uh, looser um, is, is very much me, you know, because as, as an administrator, I mean, you can't, you know, you have to be, you have, well, you have to be organized, you have to, so you, you kind of manage and orchestrate things, you know, so, so that's, that's that side of me, and that's a very strong side of me. Uh, so the other side, which is also me, uh, is a, um, a care, more carefree side, which I, I don't show to people. I show to my friends when I'm with my friends. But yeah, that's, those are two sides of me. That was part of my reflection when I was nice when I was in France. And how do you, okay, a, a, a part of my whole life as a brother, ever since Vermont, is really trying to reconcile my life as artist, my persona as artist, and my persona as brother. Or my persona as leader, and I would always, um, I always, uh, I see somebody professionally once a month for the last ten years. So it's, it's been very helpful to me. And uh, I would always, one of the themes for 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 a long time was, how do I bring the two together? My my persona as artist and my persona as as, as leader, because it can't be dichotomized. It can't be I go on a residency and I'm an artist. I finish the residency, I go back to work, I'm a leader. I'm a school leader. So how do you bring the two together? So part of my whole life process is trying to kind of bring the two together. My persona as artist and my persona as leader. So, so yeah, I, I don't know if that makes sense to you. Oh, it makes a lot of sense because uh, a lot of us in the School of Design and Arts are like that. Who are also administrators. Yes, yes. Who are yes. also teachers. Uh, That's right. Have to find a way of uh, continuing Continuing uh, being an artist. That is right. That's right. We love our students. Yeah. We love Benilde, but we also need to do our art. Exactly. Right? Right. And we also have, some of us have children and pets. We have to take yeah. care of them and yeah. occasionally take a bath. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> so, but, so yeah, I always say that going on an artist residency has been so life giving to me. And I imagine for artists who are te teachers who, and who have to do uh, a different kind of uh, living, to, to, to do their art is life-giving. Um, I, uh, I was telling Ye Ye, uh, who's the MCAD director, every yes. time I meet with the MCAD board of advisors, it's just so lovely because we're not discussing um, financial uh, financial records, we're not discussing numbers of en enrollees, we're discussing about art, what is art, uh, what kind of show do we, we put up, that's, that's the kind of thing that's life-giving to me, that, that's the kind of thing that excites me, um, yeah. It excites us too, so come to all our meetings with ah. my students, when we discuss programs and all that. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know what tires me? What tires me is, yeah, you know, you have to, okay, this is our budget, and this is, or this is the way we need to run the school. That, that's a very tiring part of my job. You know? But the, the, one that, the one that actually excites me is when we speak about what shall be nil be three years from now? Mm. What kind of programs do we want to offer? Uh, you know, what is the kind of art do we want the audiences in Manila to, to see? Mm -hmm. So, so that, that, that thing excites me. That, to me, is so life-giving. And without that, oh boy, the... Uh. Yes, I mean, we're getting comments from our chat group. I'm so excited now to have Brother Dodo uh, from Agnes Mascasayat, who's an artist herself and a DJ. She's so excited. And then our other... There are other questions that are coming, which you are answering from Eric Villanueva, who was the chair of the theater arts department about uh, being a brother and being a leader and being an artist. So this is what I thought was your, uh, your self-portrait. And the question that came to my mind is, which you are answering, who are you really? 
Brother Dodo. How has being an artist affected your being a brother, being a leader in education, being the president of Benilde and other things? Okay. Can I, can uh, I, uh, what? Yeah, but wait, this one, this one will help okay. you. <laughs> what have you sacrificed yeah. for art, for leadership, for the brotherhood? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> the second part is harder to answer, so I'll, but I'll answer the first, okay. first part uh, first. No. Uh, I was just thinking about that today when I was exercising. <clears throat> and I, I, I think, you know, as leader, of, when you run a school, you're, you have to think about rules. You have to think about parameters. You have to think about what needs to be done. I, I think being uh, my training in UP and as an artist has taught me to understand that there doesn't we don't need boundaries. That that, that it's, it's sometimes bounder well not sometimes boundaries keep us in, but sometimes we need to break those boundaries. Sometimes we don't need to do the way things we used to do. Uh, that I think every artist understands that. That uh, you know, there there are no rules. Um, art can be anything. Um, but but of course, when you when you run an institution, when you run an organization, there are rules. But what I'm saying is, yeah, we can think outside of those rules and maybe find solution solutions that we can't find because we keep ourselves confined to those rules. I think as artists, uh, I have to just. I'm not talking about just uh, me, no? but also the, the, the in SDA. Uh, I, I think that's what we can bring into the programs. That's what we can bring into uh, the, the different schools in the different programs in SDA. What have you sacrificed for? Uh, I, I wish I could live my life as an artist. Allah. <laughs> uh, forever. <laughs> Who's uh, who's the who's the top most person in De La Salle? Right now, it's Brother Armin. I always tell him that. <laughs> you know, I um I I will share this, and I, I hope this is not. Um, I love. I went to the Camino. I loved it. I loved my Camino. I uh, uh, I loved every moment of it. I loved to go back to it. I told my superior, Brother Armin. I said after my term, I'd like to go and walk the Camino one last time. You know, I, I, <clears throat> but part of the reason why I liked it was because of the freedom it afforded me. The freedom that I, there was no expectation on who I was. I was just me. And I was just being me. It, it, uh, the same goes for being a, uh, for being a in, in an artist residency. The reason why I loved it was because of the freedom it afforded me. The same goes for running. I love running and I love walking. Why? Because it, I'm freest when I'm running. I have no telephone. Nobody, I, nobody talks to me. I, so it's, I'm just being me. And uh, so what have I sacrificed? I guess be, being a brother, I have to live in, in certain parameters and certain um, rules and regulations. I have to uh, fulfill certain expectations. I, don't get me wrong, I love being a brother and I, I love the life. It has given me so much. Uh, but it's so my struggle really is how to be an artist as a brother, you know, and as, as a leader. So that's that's really my my ongoing, not struggle, but ongoing process. I don't know if I answered your question. Yes, you have. You're answering more okay. than the question, actually. <laughs> You're answering many things. Here. Another intriguing piece, a little bit lighthearted, and this will involve everybody who's watching, who's here, okay? Um, I was intrigued by these pieces that you made, Brother Dodo, and I wanted our audience here, our, our fellow Zoomers, um, to tell us what they see in this. Um, I put the word anthropomorphism here, attributing for these uh, images that we see here 
I, I know what they are, but let's pretend we don't know what they are. What do they see? What characteristics uh, uh, can we attribute to this object? Um, so let's ask people to put in the chat, what do you see, people? Somebody says they see Darth Vader. Timothy Dakanai says Darth Vader. Maria Lucina de Santos says movement. Um, Megan Loxon, I see a hand holding a pen, an old pen, the calligraphy pen. Interesting. Any others? What else do you see, people? Allah, Brother Dodo's laughing at you, people. <laughs> what do you see, people? What do you see? What else do you see? Uh, Eric de la Cruz sees uh, the zoomed one. I see a woman with the face covered, only the eyes can be seen. Agnes Macrasayet, beak of a bird. Jenelyn Christina Cruz, a person hiding his, her emotions. Isabella Peterson sees cricket. Sujata, my sister, who's part of this, the right one, the long nose of a horse. Joaquin Severino, twists and turns the dark and light of life, mystery and hiddenness, woo, baby. Um, Kyle Confessor, close up dystopian fly, <laughs> okay. Uh, Melanie, part of a clothing, mm, interesting. Aldi Aguirre, animal ears like a goat's. Annabelle McDonald, a coat, fabric, Camila says, Jenelyn Rhinoceros. Okay. Very interesting, no, Brother Dodo? Yes, yes. Okay. So here we have our old lady with the eyes, which is actually part of a piece of clothing, as one of you said. Yeah. This is a pair of jeans hanging on a nail. Oh. Yeah, on the nail. <laughs> yes. So you have this face like creature here. This is the pocket. These are the trouser pants. The top part. Oh, yes. Ah, the snout is actually, you can see the whole pant hanging on a nail with those creases. Intriguing, isn't it? <laughs> I love doing this series. I loved it. Tell us why. Ah, it was it was nothing serious. It was nothing important. It was a pair of trousers. I, I drew four of that, I think, four. And um, it's it's. I love the uh, the fact that you know it was a subject that wasn't serious. In fact, some of the residents in in Vermont, I did. Edmundo, you came here to draw that. <laughs> I said yes. So uh, th this was the answer to the problem of what am I going to draw? Because I wanted to draw religious imagery, which wasn't working. I did attempt, and then in the end, I, so I hung one of my my actually cargo pants, cargo shorts. Oh, sure. Okay. I, was, I thought, I thought and, they were they were I thought they were denim actually, but okay. <laughs> and I, I drew it, and I said this is what I want to do, and for the next six weeks. I did that. And then there was another series I drew. I don't know if you want to show them, both divers. So Yes, we will. We'll, we'll show that. But this is, I find this very interesting and whimsical, actually. Yeah. From the heaviness of the Holocaust image. Yes. The heaviness yes. of the fly. Yes. And the uh, controlledness of the Nautilus. That's right. You have this whimsical, this ordinary object, actually. Yes. Um, with all the creases and the shades and the lines. Um, oh, I love doing that. I loved it. Okay, so this there is the lighter side of you then. <laughs> In the yes. Nautilus that is you, there's some naughtiness. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> the plunge. I call it the plunge. Um, okay. Speak, tell us, what is um, this? This is a... Uh, a series of drawings uh, of divers. Um, this is actually two separate, not two separate. Uh, yes, two separate drawings. images. Yes, yes. 
two separate images. And I, I just, and it's, it's about, probably about six inches in a piece of paper that's about four feet. Mm. So it's all empty space. It's all empty space. Uh, I just, I, all my drawings in Vermont, were, they were like suspended um, in midair. In fact, one of the, because in Vermont, there's a professional artist that comes, he gives a talk, and if you want to invite him to your studio to critique your work, so I invited one of them, he's a very nice guy. And he says, don't you want to put context in your work? I said, what do you mean? Like, you know, a wall where your trouser is hanging? Or I said, no, I'm, I'm okay. I, I just want it to spend. I just want it as is. Uh, and the same with the diver. You know? Don't you want to put context in? I said, no. So it, it's uh, the, the only thing that uh, the only drawing of the divers that's very different is this one with the, with the rope. Yes, with a rope. Yes, I see. The rope tied to his uh, an an ankle. Yes. So yeah, all, all the rest were really like divers. And then, in fact, one one is vertical. So if you actually, when you hang it, you can hang it any way, and it will look different. So you can hang it upside down, hmm. like flying up. You can hang it as it was when I drew it, meaning diving. Or uh, in a landscape format where it's like it's flying. Okay. So it really depends on the orient how you want it. Yes, that's except really for right. this one, except for the one with the with, with the this room. one. Well, yeah. this one I feel is uh, is very um, evocative, actually, with the string. Yes. Like your life is on a string. Yes. Yes. I thought I thought that after I had painted it, I said, oh, maybe this reflects my own, you know, my own sense of self, you know, that it's I'm tied. I'm tied. I'm, I'm tied to a life. So, yes, uh, again, you're melancholic. <laughs> I, I can sense the melancholy. But I, what I saw is even if I plunge, there'll be a string to hold me up. That's right. More That's positive. Right. I was more optimistic, Naman. Yeah. <laughs> that, yes. even if, that I can take the leap because the string will hold me up. The string could be God, could be That's destiny. True. true. That's true. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Brother Dodo, you are melancholic a little bit, saying that I am tied, okay? Um, <laughs> which is an interesting way of looking. Yes. We have a response to this, uh, these pieces, uh, this diver. Um, from our chair of the Design Foundation uh, uh, Department, Tim Dakanai, okay. which we'd like to share with you through ekphrasis, which is uh, inspired responses to your art, um, with a poem which will amplify and expand its meaning, hopefully, for you, give you another way of looking at it. Um, and it is... Uh, uh, I had, I had shared some of your pieces with the faculty and the students, and this is what Tim Dakanai has come up with. Do I see a crucifix or a savior diving down, down, down to humanity's big warm embrace or even to the lower depths to hotter hell to kiss Satan and do the high hello? You're surrounded by light and it's all white. It's all right, it's all right, said Billy. You're only human, and you're supposed to make mistakes. You, son of God, became human, and you took a dive for us. The dive to your death made us rise to the sky. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice, Tim, thank you. Tim, can you come, please? Can you show yourself? Where are you, Tim? There you are, Tim. Marami salamat. Very nice, Tim. Thank you. Welcome po, sir. Uh, inspiring po rin yung, uh, uh, yung uh, artwork ninyo po. Uh, that, that came after po, no? Uh, that thought that it was a, an inverted uh, crucifixion, in fact. No? It seemed like uh, it came after I was viewing uh, your artworks. Um, Doc Sunige was first dibs into like looking into your artwork, and then in fact I even shared it 
to the design foundation faculty, the different artists and sculptors and art scholars of design foundation. And they also took a look at your artwork. And ah, thanks thank a lot. You. Thank you very much. Thank you, Renpo, Brad. Uh, we, we called him the Kanai, the Jose Rizal of our uh, cluster. <laughs> doesn't, look, doesn't he look like Jose Rizal? <laughs> he does, he does. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, uh, he's, he's a playwright and a painter and a graphic designer and an educational leader too. So probably you and him will have a lot to talk about oh balancing, balancing art and administration and, ed and education, etc. And he has to handle all the artists of Design Foundation. Think that's about fine. that. I'm sure that's a handful for you, Tim. <laughs> a handful, different, uh, difficult to practice. <laughs> yes. yes. Thank, thank you so much, Tim. Thank Come you. Come so on, much. Tim. Yes. Thank you. Here. What is going on here, Brother Dodo? Uh, this, I did this after Vermont. Uh, this was, the Vermont was 2010. This was about 2012. Um, and this Siguro is the last, well, uh, I was gonna say the pinnacle of the, uh, the diving series, the dive series, but this really is the last for me. When I did this, I knew I wanted to move on. Um, it's actually an image of a diver underwater. That's why Medjo, uh, and I was just, I, I liked it. I was very intrigued by the, the, uh, um, the way it twists, uh, the way the body twists. It's slightly twisted. Mm. Uh, and, and there's also, um, a, the image but if you look at the the leg, at the lower leg, um, it's not perfect because of the refraction of the water. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was just intrigued by all of that. No, um, again, if you uh, hang it landscape type, it's mm -hmm. going to be different. If you hang it on the, with that on top, that it's also going to be different. But yeah, this is prop. This is the last of the di the divers uh, series. Yes, it's it's full of movement and it's very yes. performative, actually. Yes, yes, it's a very yes. dynamic piece. Um, yeah. that's right. That's right. So this also this piece also caught the imagination of some students. It's a synesthetic response. Okay. Uh, uh, though it is a uh, two dimensional piece, it's very full of movement and uh, dynamism. And so our dancers who use the sense of rhythm and grace oh, and nice. their bodies are going to respond to this piece. I know it's your, you think it's your last piece, but I guess it lives on. It wants to live on and it has, it will live on in the bodies of these two dancers, the Evangelio brothers. They are dance majors. Oh. Um, and they were uh, under the supervision of Nina Anonas, who was the department chair of dance. So let's see how they see, how they embody your piece. Have you seen this? Look at him, it's a gog.
it's more than burn its mango Wow. <laughs> uh, maybe call on the Evangelio brothers and Nina, please, uh, to come on. Hey, Emerson. How are you? Where's your Edwardson? Hi, Edwardson. And where's Miss hey. Nina? Where's Miss Nina? Hi, Nina. How are you? Good to see you. It's very, it was so moving. I almost cried, actually. <laughs> I'm delayed. Yes, Thank you very much. Thank you. That was really, uh, as people are making comments, it was breathtaking. It was dynamic. It was beautiful composition and line. You should be, uh, they were really inspired by this. Perhaps Emerson or Edwardson or Nina can say a little bit something about how they came, came to make this piece. Actually, before the the two talented brothers speak. I'm going to, I don't want to flatter you, Brother Dodo, but I have to. There were just too many pieces to choose from. And since we're, we were on a time crunch, I chose it because it reminded me of these two boys. <laughs> and then I just gave them an idea. Okay, I think Emerson asked me, Miss, what's that? I don't know, maybe swimming. Let's run with it. And then music, no, let's go back. And we went with Bach. It was so quick. They were just also so inspired. Come on, Emmer and Edward, please tell Brother Dodo your process as well. So um, I just want to first uh, greet everyone a very good day. Um, Doksuni, faculties, fellow students, and attendees, most especially Brother President Dodo Igmundo Fernandez. We hope you are all feel well. So my brother and I were given a chance by our dance professor, Miss Nina, to interpret through dance wonderful and eye catching painting made by our very own brother Dodo. It is quite interesting and unique. My brother and I agreed with the thought that it appears to be two men swimming. And so the movements and actions of swimmers were vividly incorporated and seen in our choreography. In fact, I thought just like a mirror image. I thought it was just one person. No. <laughs> so the whole process was quite interesting, the whole process of choreographing this, because especially now that the theaters and studios are closed and unavailable, we only have small spaces. So, but then we can't be stopped from doing what we love for. So with this, we got the chance to enhance our talent for and our skills not only in dance, especially sa pagko-choreograph po. So um, we worked for it for several days, uh, two, or, two to four hours in a day. Uh, took videos of it, keep on, kept on experimenting. Then with the help of our professor, dance professors, Miss Lina and Sir Biag. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, as what you saw, to make it more interesting, we used the bird's eye view po, uh, as the point of view. So we positioned our camera on the ceiling so that it would make it would appear like we're underwater for. and so by doing this we were also able to incorporate the the painting which is which was really not so nice for it was super simple it gives really a, a good impact po, a big impact for some mga to those who can see the painting for thank you thank you you honor me thank you very much it's, just, it's, a, it's an honor right, um uh, gentleman and gentlewoman <laughs> <laughs> gentleman and gentlewoman. Um, though that was really a very moving piece. Very, very. Uh, and uh, to, was this done in your home? Uh, yes, for Doc Suni. Uh, I, my my uh, auntie uh, uh, gave me a space for in her house. Uh, so we made a studio. So as you can see, that's a small studio. So there's a bar beside. And so uh, at first, well, we really had a hard time thinking how can we really interpret and show the painting. And then I saw the, ano po, the can you see the ceiling? Po? Yes. So I pasted, I pasted the camera on that light. Po, and then I imagined that maybe we can show the exact painting po if the camera is there. So, very nice. 
Very nice. It's very resourceful and despite the lockdowns and our limitations, we all miss the stage, we all miss our studios, yet we prevail. We're able to do something creative, inspired by other sources of creativity in order to create this beautiful piece of art. Thank you so much, uh, dear brothers. And thank you, uh, thank you. Uh, very thank nice. You so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, Bo. It's an honor, Bo. Thank you. So, Brother Dodo, um, so we have this, uh, this beautiful uh, discussion. Uh, we are coming at actually at the very end of our curatorial part. Uh, this is the last part, just before we open it for uh, open forum. And this is the fun part. I didn't tell you about it, but uh, I'm going to ask you five burning questions. Okay. And you cannot think too much. All right. Okay. And this, was, this is based on how James Lipton in the series that he did called Inside Actor Studio, he subjected his uh, celebrities to these questions. And they're not related necessarily to art, but maybe they are. Without thinking, and in all honesty, you have to do it. You have to oh answer God. it. <laughs> okay. Whatever comes to your mind. Okay. Yeah. All right. Are we ready? Five burning questions. People, are you ready to hear? Okay. What is your favorite love song? And can you please sing it for us? <laughs> go. 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 Um, uh... <laughs> My, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, brother. That's really the first song that came to my mind. I thought Nana, that you would sing Afternoon Delight or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Next burning question. What profession would you have taken on if you were not a brother? I think you answered this. Go. I would have been an artist. I would have been a waiter. <laughs> yes, would you, would have, been a waiter. <laughs> you would have had to support yourself somehow, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, next. Number three. If you were stranded on a deserted island, granted there was enough food, drink, shelter, clothes, what three things would you want there with you? A beer. Um, uh... Beer, beer, and beer. <laughs> <laughs> You're spoken like a true Lhasa light, you know? Like a true Lhasa light. All my buddies were like that. Beer, beer, and beer. Yes. Next. Next, please. Alive or dead, and besides Jesus, who would you like to have din dinner with? Jackson Pollock. Oh, wow. Okay. Hopefully he doesn't come dripping with all his ink. <laughs> Okay, uh, next, last question, the last burning question. Though James Lipton talk about going to heaven, God in heaven, being a contrarian that I am, I ask you, if you were to encounter Satan, what would you say to him? How much would, can I pay you for you to be good? <laughs> wow, you're really a reformer. <laughs> How much do I pay you to be good? Then your whole Christian brotherhood might have to give him money. Huh? <laughs> you better clarify it with those people. <laughs> Thank you so much, brother. Now, I have one more question to ask you. Will you permit me? Sure. It's not there and nobody knows it. Have you ever fallen in love? Yes, yes, many times. <laughs> okay, great. You don't have to elucidate. Okay. But thank you. Unless you want to. Do you want no, to? Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's all give Brother Dodo a warm round of applause, people. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Let's, uh, I'm going to look at some of the questions. Um, uh, people have complimented the poem, the dance. Isabella, thank you very much uh, to the brothers, to Isabella, to uh, Tim Dakanai, to Nina. That has been wonderful. Um, let us see the questions. Um, Tim has a question. How is it 
like having a biological brother who turned out to be an artist too, the filmmaker Gabby Fernandez. Go. Do you know that he was supposed to be the brother? Uh, <laughs> he, he, uh, he was the first, he was an aspirant first before me. Uh, oh my then, God. Yes, and then he was closer to the brothers before me uh, and um, he ended up not joining the brothers and suddenly out of nowhere, I ended up joining the brothers. Uh, we connect a lot. We talk a lot about books, uh, art, um, movies. Uh, he sends me books actually um, to read. The last three good books I read were from him. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, Gabby is part of our production design department. And of course he's made a number of films uh, for right. Benilde. And I have to confess to you, I don't know if you've seen it, but I'm in one of his films. <laughs> Can you imagine? He may be a star. <laughs> I, got, I got my six minutes of fame because of him. <laughs> okay, here we have a, a, a question from Yeye Cruz. Why did you decide on this? Why, do you, why did you decide on the medium of, uh, of uh, pen and ink? I, I'm just very comfortable with the act of drawing. I just like, um, I just like drawing. Uh, it's, it's basically that. I've been wanting to move into oil, but it's, I'm just drawn into drawing. It's just, it's comfortable to me. It's like home to me. Okay, this is from Mr. Walter Ocampo. Uh, hello, Brother Dodo. Do you envision Benilde, particularly SDA, as an avant-garde in the art movement in the Philippines? Oh, certainly. Certainly, I think I think we should be at the forefront uh, of of the creative industry. I, I see Benil really like a laboratory, producing artists, creative thinkers, designers. I, I speak of SDA, of course. But yes, <laughs> of course. I think even there are a lot of innovations that are happening in all the other colleges. True. Um, in Trim Trim is actually a very creative industry. And I believe also the gamers, those who yes. are doing games. Yes. <laughs> right. yes. If yes, how do you think we can do it? That's a that's an uh, addendum question. Okay, that's a very. That's a, that, I, I think we need to continue to be forward thinking. We need to continue to um, be out of the box. That's a cliche, but but that's true. Uh, and uh, yeah, we can't get bogged down by tradition by rules. And we need to get the best people. Yes, that's that's a good idea. <laughs> okay, uh, from Eric De La Cruz. As an artist, how does being a brother influence your subjects or treatment of a subject? Do you feel that it might have subconsciously kept you from exploring certain subjects? At the same time, do you feel it has taken you to a direction as an artist that you might not have gone if you were not a brother? That's a good question. Maybe when I was younger, yes, my being a brother probably inhibited me from, from doing, but not anymore. But, although having said that, I'm a very public figure. If I draw some a nude painting, some people will not be too happy about that. So <laughs> that, that's never been a consideration for me. And if I did, I'd keep it. I keep it until when I'm dead, you can look at all my other works. <laughs> well, you know, the, I'm sure the people in SDA won't mind, especially the yeah. Design Foundation people, right? Design Foundation people? Actually, I don't get shocked too often. <laughs> um, so, so when people, did you see that painting? Did you see that? Yes, I said. That. So it, it doesn't, yeah, I don't get scandalized too often. Okay, so you won't be scandalized with some of the things we do. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, uh, you you had gone to Camino. You mean El Camino de right. Santiago? Yes. This is yes, I did, Isabella yeah. Peterson. How yeah. did how did that influence your work? I'll answer that this way. I just love the freedom, the open space. I love being by myself. I walk by myself, uh, uh, except in the last one hundred kilometers. But uh, I, I love the fact that nobody knew I was a brother. 
Mm-hmm. I love the fact that people were kind to me, not because I was a brother or a brother president, but because I was a pilgrim. So that 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 made that gave me a lot of of, of overwhelming love and gratitude. So now, how does that translate into my work? I, I'm not sure, but I hope it does. I'm but sure. Yeah. I'm sure we're going to be seeing some things. Um, uh, some some of your work more in the future, especially after this forum, right, brother? <laughs> Anita, I just uh, my my show in finale was just confirmed for September. Uh, where can you in finale be- finale art file? Uh, okay. So I show fantastic. Yeah, so I'll, I'll let you guys know. Yes, please let us. We all one hundred ninety of us want to go and watch your show at least in this forum. But you've seen the works already. It's mostly. Uh, <laughs> Okay, um, there there are other questions uh, also. Um, uh, it, I believe uh, uh, Kyle Contessor has a question on whether uh, Nonon Padilla was your professor in UP. Yes. And uh, um, yes. W- what do you think? He, he's going to be one of the people we are going to also interview. Oh, um, God. very good. Yes. He's very good. I'm happy Benil. Uh, he teaches in Benil. I suggest we keep him, and we do everything to keep him in Benil. Um, oh, he's he's uh, hugely talented and hugely sophisticated. Yes, and so he's uh, he's happy to be with us, I'm sure. But we'll find out more when we interview him. Yes. <laughs> what yes. he'll say about. I him. don't know if he will remember me though. Um. He was my uh, my teacher in printmaking. Oh, okay, okay. I'm sure he will remember you. Maybe we'll ask you to join that interview so that he can see you. Well, he's very good. He's very good. Yes, yes. Um, Any other questions from our people? Um, From uh, you, you can just uh, 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 unmute yourself and ask Brother Dodo personally. Don't feel shy. Um, hi. Hi, please show yourself and say who you are. Oh, okay. Hi, so, Megan. Hi, my name's Megan. Um, it's really nice to hear po, how open you are. And it's actually from both of you. It's really um, highlight of my day po talaga. <laughs> so um, you were, kasi um, another, what I really liked about po, Father, and you miss also, uh, doctor, sorry, you you doctor also. Doc um, Suri, is, Doc <laughs> Suri. <laughs> um, is that you both mentioned, po, well, briefly, but you were both, you both seem to be really big fans of literature as well. So I was wondering, po, like, um, because I'm a big fan of Dante's Inferno. So I was uh, actually just, here to ask, like, oh, what are your thoughts on it? Or if you have any other piece of favorite literature. <laughs> yes, Brother Dodo? I, I, well, I'm not familiar with Dante's Inferno, but I'll tell you the last good book I've read that uh, I couldn't put down. Uh, this is Anthony Doerr's All the Light You Cannot See. Ah, that's if you haven't a- read that book, you get your hands. It's lovely. It's a lovely book. Lovely book. It is. It is a lovely it's book. It's atmospheric. It's, um, yeah. Oh, I'm writing it down. He's <laughs> writing it down. <laughs> all, all the light you cannot see. Yes. It's a, book, no? oh, it's a lovely book. It's a beautiful book, yes. Um, well, about Dante, uh, uh, actually, Benil had done something on Dante, That's on right. Dante's Purgatorio. Um, right. uh, we had done a six and a half hour performance. We, I called it a pilgrimage. <laughs> to celebrate his 75th uh, anniversary. Um, and we had about 400 participants. Um, everybody collaborated. Every school in Benilde collaborated on that project to enliven Dante's Purgatorio from dance to theater to the Coro San Benildo, Trim. Uh, so it was quite a festival. Uh, people came in cosplay. They did cosplay um, uh, interpretations of heaven and hell and purgatory. So it was a lot of fun, but very typical of Benildians. <laughs> it was not necessarily literary. It was yeah. performative. <laughs> it was very performance oriented. Um, we did translate uh, um, choice verses of 
Purgatorio into Tagalog and Italian, which we wrote in red on the floors of the oh my God. <laughs> much to the dismay of Terence Q and his people. Terence is here. <laughs> but the effect, you know, art, the effect of art, it was really, uh, it took a very long time to clean, but uh, it was very yeah. dramatic to see the blood red Dante all over the floors of SDA. And um, the then president, Brother Dennis, was also part of it. And we have Michael, uh, Brother Michael, who is also here. Hi, Brother Michael. Yes, Virgil. He, he played the role of Virgil. Okay. So we, Congratulations. We, yeah, so we, yeah, so we, we did that. Uh, we did that. It was quite amazing and exciting to do. Uh, and Benil permitted us to do it. God bless Benil. <laughs> to do this, uh, this piece uh, um, uh, to celebrate Dante's Purgatorio. So uh, yes, uh, we are familiar with that. Um, Brother da Dodo will read it now because he's a good Christian, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so will all of you, right? So all you There's a good Christians. translation by Clive Owen. Yes. Ooh. Okay, okay, I haven't read that the translation for that one. Clyde yeah. Owen. It's a, I mean, yeah. da, uh, uh, Dante's, uh, Dante Alighieri's uh, uh, Divine Comedy is amazingly imagistic and. Yes. Uh, mm -mm. So if you and, read that one, there are no, no need for footnotes because he builds everything into the text. Yes, and on top of that, this is the way we imagine yeah. a lot of our imagination of what heaven, mm -hmm. hell, and. Uh, and purgatory is from his writings. Uh, his, I guess he was hallucinating and maybe he was high on Italian wine. <laughs> the wines of Tuscany, I don't know what. But he was imagining this, uh, what heaven, hell, and the purgatory looks like. Um, uh, very intricate with the seven levels and, mm -mm. The and, and the beautiful, sensuous details. So, so that's why Benny would love to do it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, any other questions? Uh, uh, oh, would like thank to, you. Thank you so much. Can we much. redo the dance for public, for our larger public viewing? Uh, the dance of the boys? Yes. Yes, we will. Uh, by the way, in answer to the question, somebody did ask, can we see the performance again? This is being recorded, this, um, this session. Uh, we'll fix it up a little bit, and then we're going to put it up on YouTube to, so people can see it again. Okay, um, but give us a little time because uh, the thing about Benil's Arts and Culture Cluster, we're always at it. Do, do, do. We're doing a lot of programs. So give us a few months, uh, a few weeks, <laughs> and we'll be able to give, <laughs> we'll give you, we will give you a recording of, uh, we'll put up a recording of our back talks and all our other webinars. Other questions that are coming here? I, I have a question for Brother Dodo. Yes. Um, are you working on anything now? Uh, I'm, su up to you. I'm supposed to do more. Uh, I don't know if you can see the robes. Yes. Uh, I'm supposed to do more for my show in finale. But um, I'm not sure if I have the time uh, right now. But yeah, the, the, the curator asked me to do a bit more drawings for the show. So um, problem, the problem, uh, Sunita, is when I'm not in an artist residency, it's hard for me to get into the zone. I, I don't know if you understand what I mean, but yeah. So we have to relieve you a little bit once in a while from your duties. You have too many, you're doing too many things. <laughs> so uh, you should stop by six o'clock in the evening and then just devote it to a drawing or two. Yes, yes, I'll do that. <laughs> you know, okay, let's make it uh, after Vespers, I guess. <laughs> after Vespers. <laughs> uh, uh, I think Nina has a question. Uh, so, uh, Nina is helping uh, Megan. We will show all the dance films on April 23. Please check the back page in FB. Okay, thank you, Nina. Thank you very much. Okay, I'd like to thank, of course, um, uh, all of us for being part of this conversation, um, for you joining us um, today. 
Thank you, Brother Dodo, for your generosity in sharing yourself and your art, your candor, your warmth. The Tim Dakanai for your worshipful poem. Um, and the Evangelio Brothers for your stunning grace. And Isabella Peterson for your heartfelt rendition of Blake's poem and Kafka's devastating first line of metamorphosis. Nina, thank you so much for helping the boys realize this dance. And of course, I have to thank Shema, Cheng, uh, Jasmine, who are the backbone of this um, the technology. The, they're the wizards behind this. Otherwise, how could we have uh, our back talks? And of course, I'd really love to thank my dear Associate Dean Magda, whom I call Magdalicious, um, <laughs> who put this all together for all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is for you, Bangda. Hey, so thank you very much, Brother Dodo, as well as Suni. Um, I think all of us are very happy right now hearing the, your process. Um, also, we would like to thank each and every one of our guests for, for participating today. I'd like also to mention all our Lasallian brothers who are here right now. So thank you very much, brothers, for coming. Thank our, you, brother. Um, we would appreciate your support in our upcoming events. We are proud to lead Benil's participation in Art in the Park 2021 this month through our very own arts management program. Connect with us on Facebook. So just look us up, Benil's Arts and Culture Cluster and on Instagram as Benil Arts. So please respond to the feedback survey that will be sent to you. Um, okay, so can we all go on camera for a group picture, please? This is for our documentation and posting on our pertinent vinyl sites. so much Shema, Brother Dodo, we thank you. Thank you. You. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you everybody for joining us. Please come again. We have many, many things prepared for everybody. <laughs>